Don't get me wrong, I was still nuts. I robbed my neighbor <laughs> upstairs. <laughs> I, what did you get him for? His name was Ken, and he was from Kentucky. In Kentucky, he was one of those geese that wore a bicycle helmet with his cleats and rode his bike 80 he miles. In and just, yeah. yeah, and this guy always came over at dinner time. Like, what's up, dog? We're eating dinner. Am I, am I bothering you? I'm so sorry. You know, we're fucking Catholic. Like, we're from the East Coast. You hungry? Come on in and eat. And every night he would fucking get a free meal and smoke dope. One day he comes in, he's like, man, my mama just said, man, a thousand dollars. I think I'm gonna go get me a steak. I go, Doug, what about us? What a buy a bag of weed, come share with us. He goes, Oh no, I gotta save this money. Once he said that to me, I go, I'm stealing that money. <laughs> That's all he had to say to me. So I, I worked him all day. I go, what are you doing tonight? He goes, I'm going up to Aspen. I'm gonna have myself a good old time. I said, All right. So I waited till he left. I made sure I watched him get on the bus, and I ran to his house. I couldn't get into it. I didn't. I couldn't jimmy his lock, but he had a balcony. So I put together like a table on top of a table on top of a chair, and I climbed myself up. I went up. Balcony was wide open. People never close their balconies. Close your balconies, you dumb motherfuckers. Yeah, I always close my balconies. Because there's people like me out there, the Spider Man. Yeah. And fucking, I went in there. I couldn't find the money. I could not find out this motherfucker took it with him. I searched everywhere, under the thing, around the thing. Finally, I left the door open. I went downstairs and thought about it. Where's this dumb motherfucker? I went upstairs and looked at his bike, and I saw he had a little pouch in the bike. I fucking opened up the pouch, and there was a pouch, and I had the, and there was the thousand bucks. Was it? I took him. I got in the bus to ask when I bought an eight ball, came back before he even knew it. I fucked I snort the eight ball. Isn't that where he was? You went to the same town he, he was, was in Boston. Aspen. Yeah. It took me 10 minutes to go up there, get an eight ball, and come right back. I took the money and I hid it in my hallway. And that morning I hear. And he's like, man, I got robbed last night. Somebody robbed me. I don't know how they got in. But I got partial fingerprints from the glass. He goes, I, I was a junior detective in high school. I took fingerprints and I, I got a partial. And, to, and then he came to me and goes, I have a funny feeling it's you. And I'm like, it's not me. Get the fuck out of my house. I never talked to him again. But that gave me the taste of blood again. Yeah. That gave me the taste of blood again. So then there was this place called, it was a cheese restaurant. And I had friends that worked up there. They chose. They sold the best cheesecake. She was, she was from Hawaii, and she had the biggest tits in the world. And she made the best cheesecake. She worked for a guy. She was a sweet girl. The people who worked there were really sweet, but the guy who owned it was just a fucking scumbag. So I saw her one day. And she's like, "I got cheesecake put away for me." It was Labor Day weekend, September, and I went up there to see her, and it was closed. And I go, "Why the fuck?" She just told me. So I went around the back, and the back door was open. And I went in, and sure enough, I go into the office, and there's a deposit bag, three grand. I took the deposit bag. I fucking hit it. Next day, I went and bought an amp, a cassette player, and Madonna's first album, one of the best hit albums ever, and yeah. something else. And, and that just got my fever going for stealing. Like, it was always in my blood. And I was doing these light little robberies from time to time. My one buddy, George, was a head contractor on this building. And he takes me up there and he goes, look what we did. We finished the building. And he takes me to this room, to this condo. And he goes, these are the condos that we show to other people so they could buy it. They had furniture, towels, soaps. TVs. That Sunday, I cleaned out that condo. <laughs> he cleaned out the stage. Condo. Everything, condo, television, towels, oh my God. wicker baskets. And what are you doing with this shit? Are you reselling it? No, what are you doing? I had my house furnished. Now. <laughs> my house was furnished like a motherfucker. <laughs> I had a little tree stump with a table on it. No it more. Look nice, Rob. My yeah. shit looked like home and gardens. Yeah. I had a bed. I had matching maroon towels. I had little fucking flowers. Oh, my God. And the funny thing was me and his brother, 
his brother Jimmy was sleeping. I go, Jimmy, we're going to go rob George. He's like, fine. We went up there, kicked the door down to the apartment, took everything, pictures. You know, like pictures of people, like yeah. on the wall. We took everything. Everything. The couches, the carpeting. We did it all with a wheelbarrow. We walked up that hill like 15 times. <laughs> We were wiped the fuck out. The in-house magician at the tower at the time. <laughs> at John Denver's restaurant. At John Denver's restaurant. <laughs> and this idiot did a trick where you took a deck of cards and you put a $50 bill or 100 and there was a fan spinning on the ceiling and he put a thumbtack to it. And his thing was if he could make it go through the fan, he kept it. Well, that if, one. If it fell down, then you got your 50 back. Okay. But if it stuck to the ceiling, but the ceiling was a little midget ceiling. And it was like, on, on one side was like 10 foot, but then it would drop to like eight and a half. So at the end of the shift every night, I'd make believe I was vacuuming. And I'd go to the corner where it was like eight feet. And I'd jump and pull down like four or five All fifties. And then we just started stealing the rest of the ceiling. We just, <laughs> the rest of the ceiling. We just, we just <laughs> me and the other dishwashers, just started moving outward, just fucking robbing them every day. And he finally figured it out or whatever the fuck it was. But it was just weird that while I was working there, I started hitting drug dealers like high caliber, half a kilo. People, and then I learned that I had three drinks on Christmas Eve. And I fucking just destroyed the, the mall. I broke into three malls and then... What that, do you mean? I just... It, it was terrible. I broke into three businesses How? in the mall. You like the mall, just, you got into the mall and then... The mall's an outdoor up. mall. Oh, okay. I just went to the doors and ripped them off the fucking hinges. And went in and took whatever was in the register, 88 bucks. Because I was a jerk off, you know. And then I had calmed down for a while. That really alerted the cops. <laughs> Well, yeah, like I would somebody say. broke into three businesses <laughs> on Christmas Eve. What type uh, of person breaks into a business? So big behind that man. And Christmas Eve, yeah, who for put, real. this is where my head was at. <laughs> yeah, right. And it was every time I drank Southern Comfort and orange juice, it made me steal. Every time I drank Southern Comfort and orange juice, I, I three or four of those. I'm like, I gotta go rob somebody, and I would just walk around the mall and. You know, they had all these, like, ski... People would leave skis out. I clipped the skis. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. I was Colorado, just, sure. I was just on a fucking thief roll, you know? I probably had about... I had a block of hash that I stole. I had probably two ounces of Coke. I probably had... I don't know how much cash I had. And you from flew all the it? robberies. I had it hidden in a condo. I had it hidden in a condo. Now, did you fly with the hash and the Coke? And Everything. The some guy would come up to you and go, hey, man, I need for you to unload a truck of air conditioners. I'll give you a thousand bucks, you know, and you're unloading and the cops are driving by. You're going to get in trouble. Every day there was something, you know. It wasn't, uh, you know, the, the, when you set, up, you set up drug dealers. Okay, so I would have you as a friend, Tom as a friend, Bert as a friend, and we'd be all be friends, you know what I'm saying? But I wasn't really friends with you. I was just a customer that was giving you rope. In those days, it was well known. I would give you rope, but if you fucked me, I was just going to rob you. There was no beating. There was no threat. When you least expected it, when your guard was down, I know that every Friday at 11, Ryan Sickler picks up eight ounces of Coke. I go to a bar at 6 o'clock. Ryan Sickler's drunk. I'm going right to the house. I'm kicking the door down. You know, kicking the fucking door down and taking it. You're going to accuse me? that You can't because I'm going to be at your house the first day of the next morning telling you a hundred reasons why it wasn't me and how we're going to get the bandit who robbed you. <laughs> the bandit. <laughs> You know, like I, I was a professional. You know, I, I'm a, I was a professional. Like I just knew. So that whole summer carried me into whatever. Something weird happens in August of '82. A buddy of mine, the Bonehead family, the De Lorenzo family, great family. Grew up with them. Uh, two older brothers. That oldest one's a heroin addict. That's a plumber. 
a fucking great guy, one of my brothers in life. The middle one's a fish guy, owns a fish company. At the time, he was a mechanic, auto body mechanic. But the younger one I grew up with, we were very tight growing up. I loved him dearly. His mother loved me, his father. I grew up in his house. And he was pretty much a financial genius. He had this scam going on where he would open up a bank account and put 2000 bucks in your bank account. And then he would take a $2,000 loan from the same bank. And then he would close the bank account at a quarter to three and run across town to the same bank. Like, let's say there's two Bank of Americas. He would close the bank and then run down to the other Bank of America. And the computer wouldn't move fast enough. He'd empty the other 2000 Oh, so he'd go withdraw he there. He was smart and fuck. I he, see. Okay. He took, I guess back then, huh? He took student loans at 1% and bought homes. And really? lived homes. Like, this guy was just a genius. He had the whole thing down. So he pulled me aside and they goes, you want to go to school? He goes, what if I told you I'd get you a couple grand a week to go to college? And I go, sure. And he talked to some people at Glassboro State. Next thing you know, I'm taking four classes, GED, no paperwork. And he's like, go over there and pick up two grand. Just give me like 300. And I'd pick up these little Pell Grants. So I went to Glassboro. That lasted for like three weeks. Like I went down there. He got me a job loading roofs with tar paper, mm-hmm. so I would have to carry fucking tar paper up a roof and shit. And I really gave it a chance. Like, I was like, I'm gonna go to school, I'm getting paid. So I this really, is when you got the GED? I didn't get my GED oh, you did. yet. It only last Nobody degree. knew nothing. Yeah. He told, they got a degree, yeah. They <laughs> he just told them. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, don't worry about nothing, but yes. Put yes on the paper. <laughs> So you're taking college courses without even a high school no, edu- finished education. No. Psych 101. <laughs> fucking, yeah, you know. yeah, I know those classes. And I'm just going to pick up a check. They give me like a check every two weeks because I'm part of some Spanish thing. I never really thought about what he was doing. But I just went I couldn't stop stealing. Every time I got two... Uh, so, All right, so let me ask you this. Would yeah. you say more than any drug that you were addicted to, stealing was the drug that you were most addicted to? At, theft? This, at this time, you got to remember my state of mind as a child. My state of mind was that God took away the most important thing in my life. He took a shit on me. So now I really don't give a fuck about humanity. Like, my my life is to make your life miserable. Because God made my life miserable. So that's what's called lashing out, isn't it? Lashing yeah. out at the world, you know. I was lashing out in my own little fucking retarded way. So, And uh, that was it. It was lashing out at drug dealers.